Oh, hey there, fellow scientists. I'm so glad you're able to join me at the amusement park today. Being here among all the people, the sounds, the colors, it always makes me feel so energetic. It's the perfect environment to learn all about the forms of energy. I also have to do something to pass the time while I wait in line for my favorite roller coaster. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to identify different forms of energy, explain the relationship between kinetic and potential energy, and describe some ways that energy transforms. Let's get into it. Energy is the ability to do work, and it exists in a ton of different forms, like thermal, light, sound, electrical, chemical, and mechanical energy. And those are just some of the forms energy can take. In our previous lesson, we observed energy in the form of heat from the sun. Heat is what we call thermal energy, and it's caused by the movement of atoms in an object. It's what's warming our day at the park, popping the popcorn in the food hall, and melting everyone's ice cream just a bit too fast. Thermal energy is especially important because every time energy changes forms, some heat is released. For instance, when you experience the force of friction by rubbing your hands together, the energy you're putting into moving your body is transformed into thermal energy, heat. Another form energy can take is light energy, which is just what it sounds like. It's the form of energy that is visible to the human eye. Sources of light energy include natural sources, like the sun lighting up the park, and artificial sources, like the flashing light bulbs along the rides here. Sound energy is the energy of sound waves. Sound travels as vibrations through matter. Sound can range from the most accelerated screams on the loop-de-loop -loop coaster and the liveliest music, all based on how those sound waves are shaped. Electrical energy is the energy caused by the flow of electrically charged particles, such as electrons. This is the type of energy we harness as electricity, and it's being used to power basically everything in this park. Chemical energy is the energy stored in the bonds between atoms. When those bonds are broken, the energy is released. Chemical energy is present in food before it's eaten, batteries before their devices are switched on, and fuels like gasoline or coal before they're burned. That's a lot of energy. Can you think of an example of each of those forms? Pause the video here and jot down your thoughts in your guided notes. When you think about energy, you might think of getting up and dancing, of racing your friends, or of riding a bike. All of those are what's called mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy of motion, and it has two parts, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is the energy of objects currently in motion. A skateboarder zooming down the street, a bird flying through the air, and a dog running after a ball all have kinetic energy. If it's in motion, it has kinetic energy. Potential energy, on the other hand, is the energy stored inside an object with the potential to move or change. A sled at the top of a hill, books held over your head, and a stretch rubber band all have potential energy. Usually when we're talking about potential energy, we mean the potential energy that an object has due to gravity and its position above the ground. The higher an object is, the more potential energy it has. Think of a glass of water that's sitting uncomfortably close to the edge of a table. It's currently just sitting still, but it still feels sort of dangerous. The reason it feels this way is because you're aware of its potential energy. Because of its height off the ground, the glass has the potential to fall and cause a big mess, or worse, get your socks wet. Ugh. In the same way, an apple in a tree or Jack and Jill up on a hill have potential energy. Once they begin to fall, that potential energy starts to change to kinetic energy. 
we have a perfect example of an object's mechanical energy shifting between potential and kinetic. The roller coaster. As the ride reaches the top of the hill, it has a lot of potential energy. It's sitting at a great height, and the force of gravity is pulling it towards the ground. And since it's not a really boring roller coaster, it will eventually go down the hill. As it starts to fall, its potential energy from being high in the air converts to kinetic energy, motion. As it gets farther down the hill, more and more of its potential energy changes to kinetic energy. Then when the ride climbs back up the hill, its kinetic energy shifts back to potential energy. Who knew an amusement park would be such a great place to learn? Take a second to pause the video here and label where the roller coaster has the most potential energy and where it has the most kinetic energy in the diagram in your guided notes. The conversion between potential and kinetic energy isn't the only energy transformation going on with this roller coaster. Throughout the course of the ride, some of the coaster's mechanical energy is lost. Now, remember, energy is never destroyed. It's only transferred or transformed. As the roller coaster moves, its wheels rub along the track, causing friction. Just like when you rub your hands together, that friction causes some of the ride's mechanical energy to change into heat and sound. Because of this change of energy, the coaster can't keep rolling forever on its own. To keep it moving, the ride needs to convert electrical energy, electricity, into mechanical energy. So it'll still be running by the time I reach the front of the line. Speaking of which, I think it's getting really close to my turn to ride, so let's review everything we've learned today. Energy comes in many different forms, including thermal, light, sound, electrical, chemical, and mechanical. Mechanical energy is the energy of motion, and it has two parts, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is the energy of an object in motion, and potential energy is stored in an object based on its position. To learn more about the different forms of energy, be sure to check out the practice questions and activities that go with this lesson. <laughs> I made it onto the ride! Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go convert some potential energy into kinetic energy. Uh, <laughs> until next time, remember, science is all around us! See ya! Ah!